Hello, I'm Michael Curran from the Ottawa Business Journal. Welcome to Techopia Live. This is a regular podcast from OBJ that features executives from next generation technology companies. We want to shine a spotlight on the up and comers, and we also want to keep you updated on the established players, all with a goal of keeping you connected with Ottawa's technology sector. Today, we have something a little bit different in store to you uh, for you. Instead of one speaker, we've got two two for the price of one. And we're going to speak with a promising Ottawa startup, but we're going to rely on an expert to explore some of the financial best practices around running a young technology company, especially as the winds of economic change might be blowing. After many months of sky-high valuations for privately held technology companies, record-setting venture capital deals, we saw some of those in 2021 and 2022, and a bullish stock market, the winds of change seem to be blowing. Some, not all, technology stocks have tumbled, and there are signs that venture capitalists will be more stingy with new and follow-on financings. While the winds of change might be blowing across North America, Ottawa's tech so sector is certainly not immune. Take uh, Shopify's recent layoffs, for example. So here is the question for today. If you're the CEO or CFO of a startup or established technology company, what risks should you be contemplating right now and what actions should you be taking from a financial perspective? It's a tough question to answer, but we've got a great expert to help. She has been the CFO and virtual CFO to dozens of companies in Ottawa. And almost 10 years ago, anniversary coming up in December, I think, she founded Number Crunch, an advisory and financial services company that specializes in scaling SaaS businesses. Let's watch this video for more information. Number Crunch is an Ottawa-based firm that allows you to outsource your financials, especially if you're a technology startup or early stage company. Number Crunch services range from bookkeeping, accounts receivable, and monthly reconciliations to full virtual CFO services, including investment preparation and cash flow forecasting. Number Crunch is led by Susan Richards and Craig Hung. Combined, they have more than 40 years of financial experience in this market, having advised dozens of firms. Number Crunch will help your company mitigate risk by ensuring proper accounting procedures, provide you with strategic input and scale along with your business. To get a quote on outsourcing your accounting, please visit numbercrunch.ca. Now, please welcome a longtime Techopia sponsor. Here is Susan Richards. Happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So much. Yeah, I'm, yeah, it's always fun. And I, I do mean that, Susan, talking with you. You bring such a wealth of experience uh, through your uh, through your practice. Uh, also, you're coming off, uh, is it s seven years almost as the chair of Invest Ottawa? That's right, seven years on the board. As the chair, I was, oh. I think it was four years. I started with the audit committee and uh, was a multiple um, committees, including the founding of the female founder and women owned business uh, subcommittee to the board. But uh, it's been four years. Um, it's typically a six year tenure, but given the pandemic, we extended just to kind of ensure continuity. So uh, I still um, working with Invest Ottawa. I will continue to be involved in the uh, local ecosystem um, on, you know, from a variety of capacities. I know it's near and dear to your heart. Yeah. It just occurred to me that today's guest, who we'll introduce in about five minutes, is actually a product of Invest Ottawa. So very uh, appropriate uh, that we have this guest here with us today. Absolutely. So, uh, Susan, in my perspective, uh, there's no uh, question that the the macroeconomics have changed specifically. Mm. We were in the pandemic, and it was all very confusing. And yet, you know, besides the initial dip, we saw tech stocks at an all-time high, I mean, publicly traded. We saw valuations. As indicated, we saw some big venture capital deals. Now we've got like runaway inflation. We've got high interest rates. 
we're seeing things change. So yeah. I guess the first question for you is, do you do you agree that the macroeconomic situation is changing? Yes, yes, for sure. Like the, the last few months, uh, it's month to month with new information. Uh, certainly we see inflation, uh, we see rising interest rates. Um, you know, there's talk of the R word, um, but the reality is every recession looks different and I'm an optimist. And I think, you know, there's a lot of well-being. Our economy is still doing very well and, uh, and there will continue to be great success throughout whatever we see in the next um, year or two. This is going to play out over an extended period of time. You know, and it occurs to me, Susan, that, you know, some of the younger technology executives uh, in Ottawa might never have seen a recession, certainly mm -hmm. when they were, you know, in the CEO or CFO or executive chair. So uh, you've, you've, you've been around, you've acquired lots of experience, Susan. You know, what do you, what, what do you typically uh, look for? What should, what should companies at a high level be cautious about when, and I'm, I'm like you, let's not use the R word too much because we don't know it's, we're actually okay. in it, but what should, what, what, what in your experience should they be on the lookout for? Well, great question. And I think, you know, we should certainly anticipate slowing growth. So will we continue to grow? Yes, hopefully. Um, will it slow from what we've seen in the last uh, year or two? Yes, certainly. Um, and I think that, you know, as founders, um, you need to take a look at your audience, your target and how this will impact them, because this is going to look different um, to different organizations. Some sectors will not be touched at all. Others um, will be. Um, so, you know, keeping, you know, if you have a business to consumer product, there may be an impact, uh, but certain business to business um, may have different things. Certainly the funding. So valuations are not what they were. They're still strong. So if we go back two years and, and do a comparison, we're still doing well, but we have seen inf an inflated valuation and inflated funding ecosystem, and that's likely to soften. Um, we're seeing it already. There's expected to be, you know, longer to do a deal. You're probably going to see tranches instead of securing that six million up front. You're going to see uh, tranches that you need to meet. Um, milestones you need to meet in order to release that funding. It's the funding landscape will shift. And I think everybody has to kind of be wary of that, be thoughtful and mindful of that. Uh, but there will also be opportunities, um, opportunities to acquire, opportunities to partner. Um, so, you know, keep sporty about the whole thing, um, especially in the tech sector. These founders are resilient and creative and innovative. And this is where we can flex and, and uh, there's opportunities to be seized. I, I like that point. Uh, I was recently speaking in a past episode with John Proctor from Martello, and his point was in a recession, you need to play op defense, and defense is often, you know, controlling costs and cash flow, and you need to play offense, right? So you can't you can't do one or the other if you're in a high growth industry. You can't s slip into one mindset where it's like lay people off or yeah. or suspend. You you got to go on offense too. Absolutely. And I think, you know, like if I, for a startup founder, often you do lay out your financial roadmap and you set out expectations of customers that you're going to acquire and you set out expectations of your hiring plan. And, and sometimes those two happen in parallel without a correlation. I would say, you know, at this point, path to profitability is key. Being aware of your cash run rate is key. And maybe unlocking that resource investment when you hit those revenue milestones. So making sure that you are on track with your customer acquisition before you execute on your hiring plan. Um, and so not necessarily pulling back on spend, not necessarily, but if you had spend already planned, understanding is that still relevant? Have I been on track with uh, customer acquisition in order to enable me to continue to stay on track with my spend plan. Just being more mindful um, yeah. than we've had to be. We have not had to be as mindful of these things um, because there was money readily available. Everybody was eager to invest. So let's uh, start turning our attention and we'll introduce our guest in just a couple minutes, but let's start turning our attention to Ottawa. And I, like, I really do get that there are macroeconomic con conditions. And as I said, Ottawa is not immune from them, but just because Facebook or Google, you know, are down 30% or something like that and, uh, and might be shedding employees, that doesn't mean that's what's happening in Ottawa. I've seen some evidence, you know, Shopify aside of some layoffs or hiring slowdowns without disclosing anything confidential, because I know you're looking at the books of many 
local companies. What are you seeing here in Ottawa? Well, this actually creates a short term opportunity for a lot of companies. So it's been difficult for the startups and the small businesses to compete with the Shopify's for talent. And so all of a sudden we have great talent that's readily available and, and companies that were struggling to find uh, quality talent now are able to seize these opportunities. And I, I don't know about you, if you're seeing through social, people are really collaborating that way and, and coming off one job right into uh, a recruiting process for um, a company that's, you know, money has been deployed and companies do have to um, execute on, on their hires. And so right now there's actually great opportunities coming out of that. I like the point. So uh, we've been teasing uh, today's guest, and uh, she's a great one, a great example of a, a technology company. Let me tell you a little bit uh, about her. This company was founded in 2016 by a team of people who all struggled when providing care to their loved ones. Recently, this company closed a $6 million seed round. Please welcome now to Techopia Live, a co-founder and the CEO of Wellbe. Here is Elizabeth Odette Bordeaux. Welcome, Elizabeth. Hey. Thank you so much, Michael. Hi, Susan. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah. Nice seeing you as well. We appreciate your time, uh, Elizabeth. So what we're going to do is get to know Wellby a little bit for a few minutes, and then we'll maybe uh, tie in today's theme a little bit. So to kick things off, though, uh, Elizabeth, maybe you can give us kind of the elevator pitch uh, on uh, on Wellby. Certainly. So what we do at Wellby is we help retirement communities as well as long-term care communities make sure that they are providing a personalized experience to their residents. So this comes from helping them understanding better what their residents like, where are they from, what do they, what would they like to do during their day, all the way to helping them program activities as well as um, like events where they will get everybody together that have similar hobbies, similar interests and creating those connections within those communities that right now is impossible to create because everything is done on paper or people are overwhelmed and they don't have time to make those connections in between residents. Susan can ask us a follow up question, but I'll just jump in here for Susan. There's there's a very touching story, Elizabeth, uh, about the founding of the company and you getting passionate about this issue. I think it involved the passing of your grandfather, is that right? Yes, so it all happened a few years ago when we had the hard decision to take where we couldn't provide to my grandpa the care that he needed. So we thought, why not put him into a retirement community, thinking his health would at least stay the same or even get better as he was joining a new community with new people. He could interact, get out. Um, and sadly, it did the opposite. And he was socially isolated and he passed away a few months later. And that's definitely what inspired me to find a solution. I thought at the time, why have we not been able to establish what my grandpa likes, what he would what would get him out of his room instead of him being socially isolated. And um, today I'm proud to say that we have made an, an impact into over 30,000 uh, lives like my grandpa. And this is just the beginning. It's such a uh, touching story. Thank you for sharing it. And over to you, Susan. Sure. Um, Elizabeth, I'd like to just help um, the viewers understand like where you were from uh, the point of view of being able to even qualify for a seed fundraising and and how you're deploying those funds. Um, so at this juncture in your business, how is this, um, you know, how did you get the money and how are you uh, deploying it? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I don't think raising money is easy, but I think the biggest thing that we've done was building relationship over time. Um, I think it's always been about being open minded, being out there searching for help. Um, very often I do meet a lot of founders that will go out there and they don't want to share too much about their idea. They want to stay secret. For us, we did the total opposite. We were like, this is our idea. This is why we want to fix this issue. Are you in? Can you help us? And through those past five, uh, six years, actually, we've really been focused on building those relationships that we knew that when was going to be time for us to open up a round, we're going to convert into investors. And it turned out to be actually amazing where we got double the amount that we wanted. Um, and we had to say no, sadly, to some investors, but they're eager to join our next round. And in terms of where we're going to be deploying the capital, it's mostly into growing our business in terms of um on the staff side of, side of things for us the past years i've been really working on the product making sure that it fit the need 
Um, we work very closely with giants in the industry, such as Rivera. We went in their community, making sure that it really answered the need. And we knew that we could scale this platform to thousands of communities within a few months. And now that we have that, we have product market fit. The next uh, step is let's grow this team and let's make sure that everybody hears about what Wellbe can do and the changes it can have. Fantastic. Sure. A follow on question to that regarding the those relationships then that you um, that you started early on. Would you advise um, founders if they're not quite ready to fundraise yet that they should start that dialogue and and how do they have that conversation without feeling like, oh, now I have to share uh, numbers with them? Did you feel you had to early on or could you just have like qualitative discussions about what the business was up to? I think it's all about understanding your strengths and weaknesses and where you can get some help and support from others. And that's what I think we've done well at Wellbe in terms of identifying who can help us for certain places or certain jobs um, that we were lacking. So as an example, we're working with Susan for all of her financials because I know why not use a professional to help us out. And I think over the years, it's been establishing who is the best person to help us for that weakness. And over time, we've had to share with them what was needed for them to accomplish or to help us with that particular task. Um, we've never really had to, to share too much that we didn't want to share. I'm a big believer in let's make sure that we build a good relationship. And over time, as this evolves, then we will share more and more. And in the end, you just got to surround yourself with people that you trust if you don't feel comfor comfortable sharing this data, then maybe you shouldn't be getting advice from this person. Excellent advice. Elizabeth, I want to talk a little bit about the financial control measures that you might have in place. As I understand it, uh, you're about six years in, you're bootstrapped. You said it was your seed round, so you're bootstrapped for a long time. So just as you've been developing, talk to us about how you've been controlling spending and trying to maximize revenues. We are, um, a lot of our investors will tell you that we are probably one of the most prudent company that they have in their portfolio in regards to money. Uh, we are very, very um, careful with where the money is spent. Who joins our team? Is this person really needed? When are they needed? What type of impact are they gonna, going to have? Um, at Wellbe, we've had this theory since the beginning that we don't want to just hire to hire. It's important that everybody that joins has a position, has a place, and they can have a big impact. So this has definitely had a big impact for us in terms of growing the company with the money that we had at the time. And also, I think another big component is we try to cut costs where needed. Um, whenever we're traveling, I don't know the amount of times we've slept into, you know, not the greatest hotel and not the hotel where the conference was happening. We would walk or take an Uber, right? But it was just those little costs there and there that really allowed us to make it to where we are today and be in a good position for receiving an investment and now being able to kind of pour fuel on the fire. And maybe Elizabeth, before we wrap up, uh, and we'll come back to you in a second, Susan, can you talk to us about um, the roadmap ahead of you in, in 22 and, 2022 and 2023? What can we expect to see uh, from Wellbe? So at Wellbe right now, we've really been focused on to helping and supporting the staff within those communities. They were the ones that had the most needs and they were literally doing everything with pen and paper and they were just running everywhere. So right now with Wellbe, what we've done is we've initially saved them about 25 hours a month. So that's 25 hours that is now spent with the resident, making sure they're happy, that they're uh, being taken care of and engaged. And then the next step, that we are now focusing on is having this approach to provide the, the information and the service to the families and the residents themselves. So that's the big uh, picture that we are working on right now to now cover the whole um, circle of care around the resident, which includes family members as well as the staff and the residents themselves, because we are serving some residents that are very in independent and love seeing everything uh, on their own about what was going on within the community. What can they attend? What can they not? Um, and this is where we're going. We're, we're just going to expand our services and support more people. Well, it's it's a heartwarming story, Elizabeth. And, you know, you, you can't always say this with uh, SaaS or software companies, like it's a noble goal, like you're really pursuing societal need here. So I want to thank you for your time today, Elizabeth, and and wish you uh, wish you great luck and success in uh, 
in the months and years to come. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Okay, bye. Susan, I'm going to come back to you. Um, there's a lot of interesting things we heard there, but what kind of stood out to you in terms of financial controls and just a, a general approach to uh, spending? Well, I think, um, you know, keeping that thrifty mindset. So, you know, typically businesses are, especially um, tech businesses, they require a, a huge cash investment before you're going to have a sustainable business. And by sustainable, we say, you know, we're referencing customers actually covering your costs. Um, so maintaining that that mindset, you, you don't have to necessarily change it. You've already, you know, keep that thrifty mindset. Um, I think there's opportunities to, to um, position your, your service like in the sense of Welby, Elizabeth highlighted that she's saving 25 hours. Well, 25 hours, first of all, there's a workforce shortage. So that's a pain point she's solving for her clients. And there's a cost component to that too. So we can always be updating our, our positioning um, to, to get a better um, you know, emphasis on where the value proposition is, which, you know, is a, a way to help our own bottom line. So we don't necessarily have to turn to um, a variety of marketing strategies um, just to relate to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, I would say we want to also be careful about the scale that we do. Um, sometimes with uh, businesses and in, in tech, you're, you're doing a direct approach, you're doing a channel strategy, you're trying to execute all of these at once because at the end of the day, you want to be a, a billion dollar company. But sequencing that right now might be a, a very prudent thing. Uh, path to profitability is key. So how long before you're going to be profitable, um, cash flow neutrality, all these things are just prudent and, and timely right now. And uh, we'll, we'll wrap up here in a second, Susan, but I wanted to ask one last question on funding. So if someone's uh, watching today and they haven't done their seed round or are looking to do it, what, what kind of advice, given the economic uh, changes we're seeing right now, what type of, type of advice would you lend to them? Well, it certainly suggests they uh, lay out their financial roadmap, which is, you know, a monthly plan going out uh, you know, a couple of years, 18 months at, at least. Um, and making sure that those assumptions around customer acquisition are reasonable given the current climate so that you understand how much cash you're going to need over the next um, 12 months. As inflation rates or as interest rates in increase to try to curb uh, inflation, uh, the impacts of that take time to come into effect. So we will continue to see uncertain markets um, quarter after quarter for the next little while here. So stay on top of your roadmap. That'll give you comfort. Um, and stay positive. Um, they're, they're, this is going to be interesting, but it's, you know, the economy is still performing well. So let's keep that in mind. It's it's a good point, right? There's lots of strong economic uh, factors, in, including employment and things like that. So it, it, every, every and we don't know if we're in a recession, but every recession yeah. tends to be different, uh, That's right. as you indicated before. So we don't know if we slip into a recession, what it will look like. That's exactly it. Susan, thank you for your time and expertise. It's always a absolute pleasure talking to you. You too. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I really like it. Okay. Take care. Here. Uh, let's, uh, before we wrap up, take a look at some of the other great companies that line up to support our Techopia project. Techopia is brought to you by many great sponsors, such as EY, Building a Better Working World. Number Crunch, offering virtual CFO services for SaaS companies. Pearlie Robertson Hill and McDougall, a leader in business and technology sector law. TD Bank, specialized programs for technology companies. The University of Ottawa Faculty of Engineering, creating the next generation of technical talent. Callion, innovative solutions delivered with integrity. Techopia is not only a podcast, we post new articles daily at obj.ca slash techopia. If you're on Facebook or Twitter, you can find Techopia at Techopia OTT. And if you're on YouTube, please subscribe and click the bell icon. As we wrap up, a big thank you again to Elizabeth from Wellbe. Such a heartwarming and meaningful uh, vision. Uh, that they have. So hoping them uh, good luck. And a reminder that if you're a technology CEO or CFO that needs some guidance, I encourage you to go check out Number Crunch online. They've got 
a great website, particularly the blog section. They've got some other videos. We've talked to Susan before, so there's some great information. Maybe even sign up for the email newsletter. Thank you for watching and or listening today. We hope Techopia is keeping you connected and informed. Let's keep building Ottawa's technology utopia. That's Techopia. See you soon. Bye-bye.